Hi everybody, I am Corey. And this is Sue. And today we are going to be talking about something that not too many people are comfortable with talking about, but we're talking about it today. And that is going to be all about postpartum, um, what that looks like, how that is um, for my good friend Sue here. This is my longtime friend since childhood, so knowing her, you know, before motherhood and after after motherhood, it means a lot. So I'm excited that she's here today to share that part of her story. Um, so yes, let's, let's get into it. Um, <laughs> Thank you for having me. Um, yes. This is a blessing. Uh, just be able to tell my story and also just to make sure I can help other women out here who are mothers who are going to be a mothers or someday, you know, want to have children. I love so. that. So first, before we even get into the questions, what even made you decide to like do this? Cause this is not something that's easy to talk about. So like, what, why are you here? Um, I think it's more so that. A lot of people go through these things, but they don't know what it is they're going through or how to accept it. Okay. So I think it's more so making sure everybody's aware that it's okay. It's okay what you're going through. It's okay that some people don't know, but tell them. So I just want to be sure that everybody knows their feelings somebody cares about. Yes, because it's crazy. When I was, um, before we came here, I was asking a lot of like moms that I know if they've been through postpartum. And I was talking to one lady at my job and she was even saying like, no, Black women don't go through that. Like, when black women get pregnant, they go straight to work. They got to worry about um, the money and taking care of the baby so they don't have time to focus on their emotions. And when she said that, I'm just like, that's crazy. I feel like that's one of the main reasons why we don't get the help that we get because we be so focused on trying to be that, like, strong black woman mm-hmm. that we're supposed to be that we don't take time to feel those feelings. So for you, what did postpartum look like for you? So just to speak on like that topic, I think that's where society comes in. I think it's more so where people think we shouldn't express our feelings because we have to be that strong black woman, because we're being pregnant. So we have to put on this facade where it's like, oh, we have to be happy or, you know, the entire time during pregnancy, you're always going to remember your pregnancy. And that's true because I remember every second of it. But the point is like how I really noticed was actually not till a year later. Wow. So I didn't know I actually went through postpartum just because of the fact that I kept busy. So, like you just mentioned, we stay busy, we go work, we, you know, be the mom, we have to do everything around the household, but it's like, we don't take that time for ourselves. So it's like, all our emotion is put to the back burner. But then when we act out or, you know, all that emotion gets balled up, and then, you know, we get told, you know, we're insecure or, you know, we have a lot of emotions, it's the hormones, it's but nobody really understands what we're going through or how that process is where there's another human being actually being grown inside of us. True. So I didn't notice until maybe, yeah, like a year later. Wow. Um, But it took someone, you know, to bring that out of me because I actually went to therapy. I started therapy and then I finally noticed like a little bit around my birthday, like, oh my gosh, I really went through postpartum. But I didn't acknowledge it either because people will say, oh, we don't go through postpartum or that's not something you should talk about. So that's when I really noticed it. That's crazy. A year later. So like (laughs) when you were noticing like, yeah, I went through postpartum, what were like your symptoms? Was it like lack of emotion? Like, cause you know, postpartum looks different for everybody. So what was the thing that was like, oh yeah, that was postpartum for me. So just going back to for me to realize it was that I went through, it's like a lot of emotion, but I couldn't express it. Mm. So it was like I felt like I was in an empty space, like a soundproof wall, like a room. Mm. And then it's like you're shouting, but nobody can hear you. So how did I know? It's just more so like sometimes you want to cry. Sometimes you feel like you're so overwhelmed. And I didn't know that. I just thought it was normal. Because, you know, we get overwhelmed not being pregnant. Mm -hmm. You know, life happens. But it was to the point where when I had my son, I didn't want nobody to have him. Mm. I didn't want him to go with nobody. It was just, but I know I needed space. I needed time. Like, I needed some mommy time. I just needed me time. Yeah. But he could not go with anybody. Like, it was even hard for me to let him go with his dad. But that's his dad. Mm. So it was like, uh, they want to take him here. They want to do that. But it's like... No, that's my attachment. And then I realized that was my attachment because I was going through that postpartum. Okay. So it was like that was my cover-up for it. Mm. So if I was to let him go, then I had to deal with my emotions. Wow. So I realized that when it was like, oh, my gosh, these actions are happening because I'm going through postpartum. I had so much going on in my mind. My actions, I didn't want to be around nobody. 
Um, sometimes, some days I was just angry. Some days I was just sad. But to just eliminate that, I would just go and do other things. I would clean. I would just walk around the mall. Like, we would just go for walks. And, yes, I enjoyed those things, but it was more so I'm really doing this because I'm going through something. But nobody knows what I'm going through. And do you feel like that had an effect on the relationship between you and your son? Um, I think he's too young to really know. I think it brought us closer because I wouldn't let him go anywhere. So the attachment was there. But more so him getting to know other people at a younger age, mm. I think I kind of kept that from him. But other than that, I think the attachment stayed there. But also, just like at a, not in my experience, I have mothers where they don't want to be around a child at all. So during the postpartum, they don't want to be there, they don't want to see the child, they, because it brings back the memories of how they felt, especially during pregnancy. So it's more so either you have that attachment, which I had, or you don't want the child around at all. Mm -hmm. And that's scary because then it makes you harm a child if you don't have, you know, that support system. So that's where it's really important for people to acknowledge your postpartum. Yes. And I do want to talk touch on that too, but you mentioned something um I don't want to lose my train of thought. Basically, when you were pregnant, okay. how how did that feel? Cuz I know there's a lot of people, you know, we talk about how you feel after you have your baby, but you know, while you're pregnant, there's a lot of people that are already feeling those emotions during that time and everybody's like, "You're supposed to be happy." <laughs> you know, the baby feels everything, you can't be sad. <laughs> but it's like those emotions are still there, so what do you do with that? Like, what did that look like for you? So, I actually had a great pregnancy even though okay. I went through a lot. I did. Emotional, like I went through a lot. But I made sure like I wasn't around negativity. I, I was one of those, like, I don't want to be around negativity. I want to make sure I'm around positive vibes um, because I, I do have that belief of where, like, the baby can signal some of that stuff because of your emotions and you guys are so attached. Mm -hmm. um, but what really happened during my pregnancy is that, yes, I was trying to be in that happy state, but it was like, I'm sad too, and like, because I don't know what to expect. So I feel like, especially as a first time mom, but even as a second or third, every pregnancy is not the same. Yeah. So, during my process, I was actually supposed to have water birth. I was supposed to go naturally. Mm. <clears throat> so, I went to all my care natural, got up probably until my 38th week, and they told me I couldn't deliver naturally. Wow. So, that made me upset. Nobody knew how I was feeling. Not even, like, his dad was, you know, with me throughout the process of all of that. So, it was just more so, nobody could really pinpoint what was wrong with me, but me. But I didn't acknowledge it. So I th I actually didn't have time to. Mm -hmm. Because that Thursday I was told that I couldn't just because I had too much amniotic fluid. So I was past the rate. Which I understand just because of risk. Mm -hmm. So trying to transfer my care that Friday. I, my order broke on Sunday. Ah. So, <laughs> yeah, so, not a lot of in between time. So wow. when I actually delivered, they didn't have any of my records. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, though, um, where I was having my care originally, they were able to uh, send over the information to the hospital. So everything did go smoothly, but during that process, like, especially at the end, knowing I'm about to deliver, and now you tell me I just was with this one, you know, I trust this whole doctor and Abdullah's and everything through this entire process, and now I can't even deliver there. Mm -hmm. So that really hurt me, and I, I cried and cried and cried, and, you know, I had some support of, you know, it was going to be okay, but... It was just like, I'm going to be okay because I could deliver the baby, but that wasn't the point. That wasn't the setup that I had. That wasn't, so everything doesn't go as planned. So during my pregnancy, it's like, you could say, oh, we're supposed to be happy. We're supposed to be this, but we still go through life. Mm -hmm. But as a woman, we get told, oh, they're pregnant. It's your hormones. That's their first, oh, it's your hormones. Yeah. And it's like, it's not. It's just, I have another feeling because I'm feeling something from another human being inside of me and myself. So I think that's where people don't acknowledge it. So if somebody's pregnant, let's say they do have a significant other or the family, they need to support them throughout the entire process because it's not fair for them just to go alone. Like, so it's just more so during the pregnancy, you don't have to be happy, mm -hmm. but people can help you become happy. Now, what does that like, help even look like, though? Just the little things. Going to a doctor's appointments with me, ask me how I feel instead mm -hmm. of people always say, oh, well, how's the baby? Because you're pregnant. You went to the doctors. Oh, how's the baby? How much does the baby weigh? Oh, how round is your stomach now? But nobody ever says, well, how are you feeling? 
Do you need help? Not what's wrong. That's the thing. Everybody say, oh, what's wrong? Oh, you got an attitude. What's wrong? Yeah. Oh, do you want, uh, you want to talk about something? <laughs> How can I help you? Mm-hmm. That's all you have to say. How can I help you today? You sit down, I'll clean up the house. Or you sit down and I'll do whatever you need. You, you need me to go grocery shop, I'll go ahead and do it. So I feel like people don't take that off of us. They expect us to keep going, keep going, and keep going. And then wonder why we're depressed after we had the baby. Because we put the blame on the child now. Because now we put, oh, well, if I wasn't pregnant, I could do X, Y, Z. Well, that X, Y, Z could have been done by that support. But people don't know this. So then it's like, oh, it's just, oh, she's just angry. Because she is her hormones. It could be. But at the same time, you can help. So I think that's where other people have to come in and say, you know what, what can I do for you today? Let me put myself on the back burner and how can I help you? So I think that's a big part, especially with pregnancy, because you could be you could be happy. That's gonna help you be happy. Because you don't feel like you have an overload on yourself. Like sometimes being pregnant, you don't want to do anything, but you had to. Yeah. You still got bills to pay, like the world's still going. But with that being said, people need to start asking, how can I be a better person to you? Maybe we just need to talk. Yeah. Just sit down, how was your day? That matters. But people don't know that it matters because, one, they've probably never been in a situation, or two, they never tried it. So I think that's what people can start doing, too. Nice. Now, when we talk about help, do you feel like the help from, you know, the, that child's father or your significant other, does that type of help look different from friends and family? Because, you know, that whole relationship, that whole dynamic is different. Mm-hmm. So, like, what do you expect at- – I don't want to say expect, but what do you kind of like, <laughs> as the mom talking to the dad, what would you like to have seen more of or feel like other pregnant women would like to see more of from the actual father during that time? Companionship. Okay. Companionship. Um, rub, rubber feet. Like, you're not walking all day. It's the, <laughs> little, toes. it's the little stuff that matters, though. Yeah. Because during pregnancy, you remember every single thing. They say like, that. Like, I can pinpoint a lot. Wow. <laughs> I can pinpoint a lot. So it's like, just let her sit down, just rub her feet, ask her how her day was going. That's different from a friend doing it. Mm-hmm. Because the love is two different levels. Like, yes, they both may love the pregnant woman, but the love is different. Because now, we seek out, when we're pregnant, we seek out love from other people. We seek, like, what we want, we're, we're looking for it. But we shouldn't have to look for it because we're carrying a beautiful child. So it's like, hey, you might go through this. Because when we start stressing, high blood pressure, now we're, we're if anything that affects us, we're affecting the baby. Mm-hmm. So now it's like, okay, how can I take stress off of you? So now from friends, bring over some food. Hey, let's watch a movie. You don't got to, you know what? They can do the grocery shopping. That's fine. For what I speak to a friend compared to the father of my child, we may talk about something different. Yeah. So I may talk about something more intimate with him or with you. I may talk about something that I've been feeling that I'm not comfortable to tell him yet. Because as a female, you may be understa- be able to understand me on that standpoint. As a male, I may be talking to him like, uh, he don't know what cramps feel like. <laughs> so yeah. it's a little bit different. Like, I could tell you how I feel. Like, ask me, like, what does it feel like? Even if you had a child, like, how is this pregnancy going? Mm-hmm. Do you feel like the baby's pushing on your, your uterus? Does it feel like... And I talked to a guy about that. He's going to be like, I don't, I don't have one. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I've never had parents. So right. it's more so like just still talking to them, but on different levels. Like, it's okay to still ask. Mm-hmm. But the questions that people usually get is, what's wrong? It's so broad. What's our answer? Nothing. That's true. Nothing. Because we want to get through it. We're not going to tell you what's wrong. You gave me a... Open in the court, like what's wrong? Nothing. Mm. So it's more so, and then also you have to show that you're really interested in, like, if we're to have a conversation, let me know you really care about what I'm about to say. Yeah. Don't just sit here and have like talk because I'm telling you to, like, oh, I need to talk or I want to talk, and now you just ain't here with an attitude because I want you to talk to me. Because now you making it worse. Like mm-hmm. you could just leave, you could just leave at that point. Yeah, and I feel but, like once those vibes are all, it makes you not want to mm-hmm. talk. It, it puts another block, another barrier. Mm-hmm. Because it's like, okay, so they don't even want to talk to me, so let me just go back in my shell. Let me go back into my soundproof room. Mm. So it's more so, you know, being short. And also, I think what, what hurts is that during the pregnancy, we don't know what to expect. During my first, that was my first pregnancy. I know what to expect. You cannot teach that. 
Yeah. There's no book to tell you how to be a mom, how to be a good mom. There's no book to tell you uh, what to do, what not to do. Yeah, you have parents, and, you know, as we get older, their old school ways don't work with our new school ways. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, with, that, be stuck <laughs> so with that being said, it's like, oh, we have grandparents, you know, we have parents and everybody to help in the situation, but it's like, I'm the mom. Mm-hmm. I have to deliver. Whichever way, if I do deliver, if I get a C-section, whatever the case may be, that's, that's my child. So how can I be a good mom? And that's what wonders, as you get closer to your due date, that's all you think about. How, how am I going to be a good mom? Oh, my God, am I ready for this? So having somebody next to you saying, you're going to be a good mom. And luckily, I had that. I had support from friends. Mm-hmm. Like, you're going to be a good mom. You Don't worry about what to do. You'll know what to do. When the time is right, you'll know what to do. And they're absolutely right. When the time is right, you'll know what to do. But when we worry about these things, if you don't have that positive reinforcement, it's not, it's, you're not going to have a good pregnancy. Yeah, very true. Now, I do know that one throughout the pregnancy and after the pregnancy, and I don't have any kids, by the way, full disclosure, <laughs> but from what I've seen, you know, emotionally and physically, you go through a lot of changes. Like, your body changes, your mentality changes. How do you deal with those changes, That the, the roller coaster? So, that's one of the pinpoints of how I knew I was going through uh, postpartum as well, because okay. I didn't love myself. Mm. All my love was going to my ch- towards my child, towards my son, that I didn't love me. And I didn't realize that until, so when I was pregnant, I got pregnant at, one. I was weighing 140. When I gave birth, I went all the way up to 160. After, I was 115. Oh my goodness. I don't think I, <laughs> I don't think I ever seen you at 115. I was 115. Wow. So for me being an athlete to just being 115 was yeah. just like depressing. It was so depressing. And that's how I knew because wow. it was like, I'm trying to get my body back. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my goodness, I got to get my body back. Then I'm eating, and then it's going into places I don't want it to go, so now I got to lose weight. But then it's like, I don't want to lose weight. I even got a trainer, and during my training session, one of the other um, trainees who was there, she's like, oh, you know, you look skinny, you look good. And my trainer goes, don't tell her that. Right. Ugh. So for me, it was heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, yeah, I got to get on this. So I actually started to... When I noticed that I was already working out, but I'm like, I got to change the workout or I got to eat something different. I got to change my diet. But I had to push myself. I really didn't have nobody to say, okay, let's do this. Okay, how are you feeling? Yeah. Like, how does that make you feel? So that's why how I noticed was because of therapy. How does that make you feel? Like, And I was against therapy. Oh, for sure. Wow. Yeah, they don't care about you. They don't, oh, yeah. I'll say, I used to say it all the time. They don't, okay. They don't care. <laughs> they, they just going to listen in. They just want to check. They don't, oh, I was against it. Oh, 100%. So what was the shift? You have to find a therapist who's for you. Okay. So I had a recommendation. Okay. And she's amazing. Older, you know, been through stuff. Nice. Um, African-American. I was so, going to mm-hmm. <laughs> African-American. So it's okay. like you have to find a therapist who's relatable to you. Okay. Oh, she's great. So it was just like... You can feel the click after, like, you know, give it, like, two, three sessions, mm-hmm. and then you'll know. The first session is just, like, an introductory. You'll, you'll never pinpoint it. But that's when, you know, when someone started asking me, how do I feel, instead of what's wrong, that's when I knew. I said, okay. I went through depression. I went through that postpartum. And so with me losing all that weight, it was like, how can I get it back? So when I got into therapy, I started working out five times a week. And all in-home, all in-home workouts. All in, I didn't even, I didn't have time to go to the gym cause, because of the fact that, I'm with, I have my son, Yeah. and I work from home. So it's like, how can I go to the gym? So that being said, I started working out, and about by my birthday, probably like six months after, I seen a difference, and I'm like, okay, I feel better. But when women go through this, it's like, one, I started off great. I was 140. I looked, what? I was good. Then I'm like, okay, I look good. I said, okay, I look good pregnant. And it's funny because the other day I'm looking back at the picture, like, oh, my God, my face did spread. Oh, no, <laughs> nobody told me. So I'm looking like, oh, my goodness. The thing is, that's what happens. So now people don't pin out that, oh, during pregnancy you're beautiful. Mm. They pin out like, oh, my goodness, your nose. Mm. So how does that make you? Yeah. To tell somebody that their nose just spread across their face. We already know. We know. Yeah. We know the changes that a baby can do to you. But it can also do good things, make your hair grow, your skin glow. Okay. 
So it's like, and I had those things, but that's also because I had to realize and try to walk myself through it like I'm going to be okay. So I had to give myself that positive reinforcement because if nobody else was going to do it, oh, it was going to be a long, like, it was going to be a long run. Yeah. So other women might have, and I have a good friend who had the other effect, gave birth and gained weight. Mm. You got to tell her she's beautiful. Inside out still. Nope, blame the baby. Blame the child. You know, the child made me look this way. When I wasn't pregnant, I didn't look like this. And so now when she looks at the baby, it's like, oh, you did this to me. Mm. So how do we change that? Everybody has to have their hands in. They have to they have to help. Like it's okay. Because now, you know, people when you deliver a baby, let's say, you know, if you still are overweight, you can health issues yeah. that come about. So it's more so now saying, Hey, I know this is going to happen. How can I prevent it? So and I think this is what, you know, this whole discussion we're having is about being able to make the awareness of you may go through this and it's okay but know that other people need to know how to help you if you do go through this yeah. acknowledge it i am going through postpartum now is it going to be a forever thing it doesn't have to be but you have to pinpoint it be willing to change it and then have that support team and also a game plan to change it so do i feel like i'm completely over postpartum no not yet i think there's still about Mm, about 10 to 20% left. Okay. And I think it takes time because I feel like more so with me, it's the support. You know, when you have a child and they say, oh, it's not about you anymore. It's not. <laughs> they, they're not. And they're not lying. Because when you bring the child over, it's, oh, the baby, oh, the baby, oh, the baby. Oh, how are you? The general, how are you? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm good. And then they get back to the baby. And, and it's just the baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But did you ask the mom... How are you, you know, how are you doing? They say good. Cool. Okay. Do you need any help with anything this week? Or, you know, not even like, do you need me to watch them? Because they'll probably say no. Like in my case, I would say no because of that attachment still. Mm-hmm. But for instance, you know, do you, you, you going grocery shopping? Do you want to ride with me when I go grocery shopping? We can go grocery shopping together. Do you like, so it's like, you still need that support system. And I'm going on, he'll be two soon. So it's still like postpartum can last for a while. Yeah. Is there, I don't know if there's a such thing as prenatal partum. I don't know. But just know, <laughs> just know you will get those emotions uh, through your pregnancy as well. But it will carry over. But if you can acknowledge them in the beginning and feel like, oh my gosh, something's wrong. And sometimes you won't know what's wrong. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you'll be in a house like, why do I feel like this? Why do I feel like this? And it's because you're growing and you're becoming a different woman. Yeah. Like, you have to acknowledge your feelings so you could teach your child how to acknowledge theirs. Mm. Because if you don't, everybody's just going to be walking around with a barrier. And it's just like, now I have this armor in front of my face or I'm in that soundproof you know, room again. And nobody's helping you. And it's all because you went through all of this years ago and you never acknowledged it. So it plays a, it plays a big role in people's lives. Even if you're not the one pregnant, you're still affected by it, 100%. Mm-hmm. For sure, for sure. And I definitely feel like postpartum is a thing that is not even just like an individual thing. I feel like it's more so a generational thing. Like, even going back towards slavery days, we we were taught, like, we we can't express our pain. We're not supposed to talk about that. We're not supposed to, like, Mm -hmm. indulge in that. We're supposed to be Mm -hmm. strong. And, And that's something, especially for black women, like, we carry that in our wombs. And so... And it's not to say that you're not allowed to feel like that because it's going to be there in your womb and you're going to give that to your baby. But it's more so when that comes up, you can't keep suppressing that. The more you suppress it and you're not talking about it and those things are not being healed, then yes, you are naturally passing that on generation to generation. I feel like this generation where we are right now, this is the time to like change that, to acknowledge things that we haven't been acknowledging. Because mm-hmm. even like I was telling about the lady at my job, she was a lot older than I was, literally saying like, no. Like, we don't go through that. Like, we're strong. But, like, that's just because that's the mentality that they had, that they had to have for survival Mm -hmm. purposes. We was living in survival mode for way too long. And that's why I love this conversation because it just opens up that space to be like, okay, I don't have to be strong right now. I don't have to do that. And Well, this is the thing. When we, especially us as black women, when we try to say, oh, we don't have to do that, people look at our vulnerability as a weakness. Mm -hmm. But where does that come from? comes from our support if your significant other looks at it as a weakness or you know your close friends or loved ones look at it as a weakness you're never going to open up Mm. 
because we had that mentality of we had to be that strong person. We had to be that strong woman. If I don't be strong, then who's going to be strong for my child? Yeah. So, yes, we can be strong, but we do have to sit here and take time and say, okay, this is what's wrong. Or this is how I'm feeling. I'm, I'm sad today. How many people will sit here and say how they feel? Like, I'm sad. I'm for actually real, sad today. Yeah. And this is in general. Mm-hmm. Our, like, our generation, our millennial generation. Yeah. I am mad. We don't express how we feel. We act on how we feel. So, we only know we're mad or someone else is mad because of the actions they just did. True. And it could be verbal. It could be verbal actions. So, it could be... Um, like, for instance, if I was mad at you, I wouldn't, let's say I didn't talk to you. That'd be weird because it's like, okay, what did I do? You mm-hmm. know? But if I would have came to you and said, hey, Corey, you know, I'm mad at you because I didn't like the way blah, blah, blah. We could have a discussion. Yeah. And now I'm not mad anymore. Now I'm healed. I, clo- I closed that door. Whereas if I didn't talk to you, I said we didn't talk for like two months. That whole two months. Now it's just like, I'm, I'm leaving that door open, mm-hmm. and now I'm just angry. But by me not talking to you, I'm letting more anger come in. Yeah, that And then whoever, and whoever <laughs> next, who might get that last little bit, mm-hmm. that's who I might explode to. Right. And now it's like, oh, I didn't mean to, but I've been so mad for two months because it started with you. So it's just like being a postpartum or, you know, during pregnancy, even after pregnancy, if, if, you, if you're not pregnant. If you're mad, you know what? Can we talk? This is how I'm feeling. Yeah. That communication. It really does go a long way. We don't have it. Yeah. It's missing. So now for, let's say for um, women who are not yet pregnant and they're Mm -hmm. looking to get pregnant, what type of advice would you give to them as far as like embarking on that journey and and all the changes that come with that? Because, you know, like (laughs) I said, you never really know. Everybody's story is different. But like, what type of advice would you give to somebody like that? I would say, one, embrace it, um, acknowledge it, and say, I'm pregnant, okay? <laughs> you have to tell yourself, like, I'm pregnant. So I am going to go through things, and my body is going to change. But if I work out, it won't change as much. If I like the way I look now, uh, you know, if I love myself, I can continue to love myself if I continue to do certain things. If I continue to work out, if I continue to stay on a good diet, you're going to have cravings. Yes, that's, that's real. You're going to have cravings. And that's fine. But don't think, oh, if I eat this, then I'm going to be fat. No. Like, get what you want. And yeah. that's one thing. When I was pregnant, I had to have certain things. Or certain, I would not eat nothing else until I got it. Wow. Yeah. When they be like, oh, I, I, pregnancy cravings be oh, strong. Yep. <laughs> I, had, I need a pizza. I'm like, I'm not. And it was probably like midnight. I'm like, I need pizza. We gotta find somewhere that got pizza. I got my pizza though. I sure did. Okay, sure. <laughs> um, so if you're going to be, you know, if you're working on uh, becoming pregnant or if you just happen to get pregnant, basically really embrace it and just say, okay, I'm pregnant. This may happen. My emotions may change. But sit down and talk to um, that significant other or, you know, the person who you're having a child with or even mom, dad, you know, friends, whoever your closest loved ones are, say, listen, I may go through these changes. If you see some changes, let me know. Mm -hmm. So we both can acknowledge them. Oh, now how does that look like? Because I feel like that can get real touchy. If you notice some changes, let me know. And then they they tell you the truth and you're not ready for It's communication. But I I just opened the door for you to tell me. Okay. It's communication. So if you feel like, I was acting like, you know, a butthole. So like, I want you to come to me and say, listen, don't tell me. Don't come to me and say, hey, you acting like, well, no. (laughs) Come to me and say, (laughs) come to me and say like, hey. This is just what happened. What made you act that way? Mm, okay. It's all about the wording. So I can say, it's the same thing as you saying that I was a butthole. But <laughs> what made you act that way? Yeah. And I can sit here and say, wow, I didn't notice it. Mm-hmm. Or wow, I did notice it. Or this is what caused it because of this happening or something else happening. So I think it's more so communication. And like you said, how you say it. So it can be anybody, though, far as like who you care about. A lot of people like to have opinions on things. So that's always going to happen. You can't get away from that. But it's who you really care about or who cares about you for you to listen to. So it might be if you're telling me something. I can sit back and say, wow, you know, thank you for telling me that. 
because I didn't know. Mm-hmm. So now, whatever triggered that, I can be more of aware of or say, okay, let me not, you know, be in that negative environment that triggered that. Yeah. Or, you know what, if that happens again, this is how I can actually act. So I think it's more so who you listen to. And some people take advice from, here we go, from the old back in the day generation. And they're like, oh, well, that doesn't matter. You'll be fine. Or so we got to be strong again. Mm-hmm. Oh, that doesn't matter. You're, oh, you can go to work. Oh, okay. your feet don't hurt you. I done walk two blocks. Your feet don't hurt you. <laughs> yeah. And I just be looking like, you're paying my pain two different things. But also, I'm carrying, you know, a child. Yeah. So it's more so be careful who you do listen to as well. But just be aware. You have to be aware of your own actions. And it's okay to tell people. People don't want to express how they feel when they're pregnant. Because, oh, it's the hormones. So what? It is the hormones. So are you going to listen to me now? <laughs> like, <laughs> right. Acknowledge, okay, it, is, it may be. I don't know. You don't know. I don't know. Hey. But at the end of the day, are you willing to talk to me? Yeah. Or let's just, just take me for a walk. Just give me some fresh air. Sometimes we just need fresh air. Mm-hmm. We've been in the house all day. Just need fresh air. So for, again, for your question, people who are getting pregnant, just embrace with that you are going to be dealing with emotion, maybe stress more, you may overthink more, especially about you becoming a mother, but you'll get it. You'll get it. It's, it's natural. It's not something you can prepare for. It's not a book on it. It'll naturally come. That's the way we are actually made. Naturally. <laughs> you realize we have a baby, all our organs shift, like everything adapts for mm. us to carry. But then when we deliver, they all go back to normal. Mm. I like that because um, I was watching something the other day. I forget what I was even watching, but the lady was just saying, like, during pregnancy, you really have to learn how to trust yourself because, mm-hmm. like, you're, it's in your DNA to know it already. Like you said, like, your organs are already doing what they're supposed to do. You don't have to tell your body to do things. It's just doing it naturally. So naturally, we already know what to do. It's just that, you know, society and the world kind of makes us feel like, this is how you're supposed to be. <laughs> you're not like that. You're doing it wrong. So then you got to read this book and watch that video. And it, it just, it, it can be overwhelming. I mean, I don't even, I'm not even pregnant. And I get overwhelmed with life. I was going to say, so are, you, like, are you trying to tell me something? Should no, I know it's something? I ain't pregnant. Though. I ain't pregnant. <laughs> not yet. But, um, yeah, no. I just, I know that could be a lot. But we really do got to trust ourselves. We, we got to love our body. Like, because cause even that whole body thing. And, again, me not being pregnant, but... Women in general are going through a lot of, like, body shaming, what you should look like when you're pregnant and when you're not pregnant. Everybody wants to have a certain looking stomach and, like, stretch mark free and like, all this <laughs> stuff. But, like, your journey is your journey. And you got to embrace that. You got to love that. You got to love the good. You got to love the bad. And you just you got to embrace it. Like you said, I feel like that's definitely a key factor. I think. For sure. I think what's hard for women is that society, um, what, it, what it just puts on the world. Like, oh, somebody just had a baby, and then a week later, they got a flat stomach. That's not true. Okay. <laughs> Tiana Taylor uh, that's goals. Not, that's not true. <laughs> like, oh, I just, had a stu- uh, I just had a baby, and now, bam, I got a BBL. Like, no, that's, that's uh, not realistic. <laughs> or healthy. Yeah. So, just basically, like, again, in my situation, I just, I lost all that weight. I lost, he took all my muscle ass. Like, do you know how long it took to get high school, college? You know yeah, how much it took? I, I've known to get, her <laughs> to get since that muscle middle mass? school, and she's always been active, always been an athlete. So I can only imagine. All that, that muscle mass was like years built. Yeah. And then that nine months, you just took everything I had. Which, good, cool. I mean, so you're <laughs> just going to have my abilities now. But right. now I have to get that back for my mental stage. Because if yeah. I'm not ready, how can I be a good mother to him? Yeah. And I think that's what people need to understand, too. If you're not mentally there, then you're not going to do any justice to the one you just actually gave birth to or had. So I think that's really important. Nice. Well, I am very, very grateful <laughs> that you put this out there. I feel like a lot of moms need to, one, listen to this so that they can understand that they can talk about how they're feeling, understand what that looks like to be able to talk to people, how to ask for help, how to accept that help. Um, and I'm proud of you. You are a great mom. Okay, Thank you. you See, are. Look at that. Positive reinforcement. <laughs> yes, like I, I love to see. I mean, I always knew you was gonna be a great mom, but like to see it and like it's manifested now, I love that for you. I really do. And I think that's where 
women need to tell other women or even if you don't know them and you see a, ra- a picture or somebody walking pregnant, tell them they look beautiful. Because that's important to get something yes. from a random person. Like, oh my gosh, I was feeling down and somebody just told me I look beautiful. So I think even if you see a random person in the street or let's say shoot, you in a hospital for some odd reason and they're in there, mm-hmm. tell them you had a birthday party, Chuck E. Cheese. I was just at Chuck E. Cheese. Two people pregnant. You guys look great. Period. You look good. But it's to help them, too. You don't know what your words can actually do for somebody else. Like, yeah. they could... People commit suicide for, because of postpartum. Mm. Like, people take their kids' lives because of postpartum. Mm. Like, recently, just a month ago, was on the news. Somebody killed... Two, actually, three of their kids. Yep. Ooh. And she's still living. Oh, my goodness. So, it's like, when people are aware of this and what they can do and be proactive, it's really going to help everybody as a generation, a generation. Because now, you can teach your children... Whenever they grow up, if you have, you know, girls or whatever, they can go ahead and say, hey, I've been through that. This is what we could do. How are you feeling today? Yeah. So, I appreciate it. I'm excited that I was able to share some information with you and with everybody. Um, Maybe we'll do this again sometime. Yes, yes, because this is... I feel like we only touching the tip of the iceberg, okay? And we got to open up the space more often for all of our women that are going through these things. So, yes. But thank you guys for listening. I hope that, you know, you guys are able to resonate with some of these things. Take some of Sue's advice. And, yeah. Thanks so much, guys.